everything else when they get to Washington. Yeah, we, we've just come to accept that. But what Eric Cantor had done was he had come back to Virginia. And he was going around through the precinct committeemen in the state and running progressives and rhinos against them and getting them removed from office. And then the next thing he did was he started going after the conservative elected officials. And when he did that, he got the grassroots attention. And all of the conservatives realized that they were all in the same place in the crosshairs of Eric Cantor. Not until then. It wasn't the lying. It wasn't the cheating. It wasn't all that other stuff. It's when they realized that that little red dot was on their chest and they were in the crosshairs. So what worked? When they realized that it was their ox that was being gored, that it was them, their conservative values, the future of their state was what was at stake. They took out Eric Cantor. Because up until that time, our institutions have been <laughs> compromised enough that they were willing to accept a less than perfect person. Have you ever seen uh, Frank Luntz? Yeah. What does Frank Luntz talk about? No, 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 no. That's what he talks about. He talks about how politics works. He talks about messaging, doesn't he? How, how they choose words and focus groups and what they say to you and this, that, and you got Now, all of us are young enough to remember the Statue of Liberty, right? Right. Well, right next to the Statue of Liberty is a place called Ellis Island. Our grandparents, parents, great-grandparents, a lot of them came through Ellis Island, but they applied, and they came with an immigrant visa. They'd already been medically screened, and they got re-screened when they got to Ellis Island. And these people were called immigrants, right? Immigrants. Now, 8 U.S.C. 1365 calls people without documents illegal aliens. What does the press call them today? <laughs> Undocumented Democrats. <laughs> but it, it, and I've literally gone to the map with AAP and, and Breitbart over this. They are not immigrants. Illegal aliens are not immigrants. That's right. So when you take and you talk to people like Frank Luntz and you talk about messaging, what are they trying to do when they call a group an invasion of 300,000 Illegal aliens, when they call them immigrants, what are they trying to do? It's the fact that they're an army of occupation. They're trying to make them look the same in your mind as your ancestors that came through Ellis Island right by the Statue of Liberty. So that it just completely blurs the vision that you have about what's actually happening. Okay? And they can't do it without the press. They can't suppress the information about what the illegal aliens are doing if the press isn't complicit. They can't hide what the administration is doing because they're putting people on aircraft, these illegal aliens, on aircraft and shipping them out of the Rio Grande Valley without being medically screened. And then 80 to 90 percent of the ones that are crossing down there aren't being caught at all. And we really don't know what they've got. But yet, the president's out playing golf. <laughs> And the guy in Texas has called out the National Guard, has failed to deal with Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, and Houston, that for the last eight or ten years have been sanctuary cities. Uh, uh, here in Tucson, we call it uh, uh, a, uh, immigrant friendly. We don't call it sanctuary cities, we call it immigrant friendly. So that means that the the watchdogs, the police, the law enforcement, the jailers, everybody else, don't ask about their immigration status. So when they go to register to vote, they don't ask about their immigration status. If they do it online, it's okay. Any state that gives a driver's license to an illegal alien, knowing he is an illegal alien, is complicit in him staying here and avoiding arrest 
and they're giving him a, sort of a, a a blank check to kind of do whatever he wants. Why? There's got to be money or power involved, right? Well, the president's asking for almost four billion dollars right now, just to deal with this. I think that's comes down to like seventy-five thousand dollars a piece for each one they have in custody. And we already know they, they've only got about t between ten and twenty percent of what happened in custody, and that's more money than they spent all together on Homeland Security. So what they're doing is they're spending more money in embedding these people in our society than they are keeping them out. It doesn't take a very bright person to figure out this is being done on purpose. And what it's going to do is it's going to change, fundamentally transform America. And this is how they're doing it. How come nobody's saying no? All I did was take for you and connect the dots of what you already knew. How come you didn't do that? How come the press didn't do that? You're complicit. That's it. Any questions? Yes. One of the things that people forget is we all heard that the wall went down in the Soviet Union. Mr. Gorbachev tear down that wall. And everybody acted like the communists just all laid down and died. The world problems went away. And we failed to see the connection of when Obama shot, uh, what's his name, the uh, guy from Russia and said, wait till after this election. Yes, And we forget the connection there between Obama and Russia. We have Russian mafia right across the border. 45 miles away from us. We have Chinese importing stuff, ideal in electronics, and you can't manufacture the stuff for the price our country's being torn apart at. It would cost China so much to wage a war against the United States that it's cheaper for China to lose money killing off our markets, our production. We can't produce anything. It's cheaper for them to sell us products below cost. If you look at a stock called PBR, it's a Brazilian oil drilling company, its stock dropped from 35 to 14. Well, last week, it went from 14 to 17. George Soros is heavily invested in it, and China just dumped a boatload of money. Because American oil companies can't drill off our shores. We've stopped uh, the American oil companies from drilling. But Russia, China, foreign countries, they can steal oil right out of your car if they want. Our own government, financial support, you need to win elections. If you're honest, nobody wants to support an honest politician. Why would you invest money if you don't want anything out of government? The people still in your money invest for a return. A lot of this is foreign governments that are putting these people in here to destroy the U.S. because the people with money are global investors. They're not Americans. They need to spread the wealth. Like you would spread a chunk of butter on your toast. You want the whole slice. Well, to get the money out of America and into these other countries, unions are looking for more members. They have a huge membership out there if they spread your money to these third world nations. What's, what's no, the that's it. I don't know how you're on target. You're just need to Okay, Chuck. Well, I had a relative a uh, number of years ago was in charge of the fugitive division nationally for uh, border patrol. And he told me, and I was just shocked, that there, there were over 300, it was about 370,000 unexecuted warrants that they had no ability to, to even take care of. And I shudder to think 
are, are we in the middle? trying to get everybody to focus on is the government is waging war on you right now. When you pick up right now and take a picture of the border situation with a camera and pull the camera down and you look at that and make sure it's what you saw, when you look back up, the entire landscape has changed. Things are happening that fast. Now, to answer your question, the only people that can give you that is the Department of Homeland Security. If it's a number they don't want you to know, do you think they're going to give it to you? No. Okay. It's just like they won't tell us what country these illegal aliens that are not Spanish speakers, where are they coming from? Now, talking to some of the agents here, they look like they're from Africa. You heard me talk about the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. What Part of that the conversation was cut out, and the part was that they haven't ever had Ebola in that part of Africa before. Besides the fact that it historically worked from the population center through the population center and didn't come from outside. You know, there is so much information that points to we are the target. And the government is keeping that information from us. That's what you need to worry about. The, the 187,000 criminal aliens that got turned loose on the street are nothing compared to the 3 million that have come through in the last six months. Would you extrapolate on the Russian mafia? Their purpose? Well, the last time I talked to them, uh, they told me that uh, they didn't exist and I couldn't figure out why I wanted to talk to somebody that didn't exist. <laughs> They are uh, not nice people. And uh, talking to uh, some friends that I know that are retired National Security Agency folks, they say that it make the uh, Mexican drug cartels look like the Girl Scouts. On that note, did you know that the 19 hijackers that took down the Trade Center were under surveillance by the FBI before that happened? Okay. Do you remember the Boston uh, bombing that uh, the FBI was warned by Russia that this guy was... Okay. <clears throat> Folks, our institutions have been corrupted. It's up to every conservative, and I don't care if you're a Tea Party member or Republican or anywhere else, and Arizona has suffered more than most states by criticizing and demeaning conservatives by their elected officials in almost any other state except New York. So the people that you're electing, some of the senior people that you put into office, are actually the problem. Because they're keeping you from having a voice in state politics, county politics, and local politics. We have one last question here. Uh, also a two-part question. Number one, do you fear for your life? Yeah, I'm getting old. No, I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't worry about that. Really? Okay. And then number two is, why are American citizens actually, you know, are the people putting them on the buses? Why are they following these orders that, that are just so against principle that the principle we live by? It's easy to make that judgment when it's not you doing it. Uh, all right. One quick one. What about the 50 caliber shots to the Border Patrol in, in Texas? Uh, probably those guns came from Fast and Furious. They have a, a lot of them. Have you any light you can shed on that? Well, a little birdie told me when they seized two M2s and two air-cooled uh, 30 cal Brownings, and one of the 50s was on a truck mount mounted in the back of a Ford pickup, that the Department of Defense released those weapons to Korea at the end of the Korean War. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you about where those guns came from. Fast and Furious was very simple. They were funneling guns to the Sinaloa cartel. That's what was going on. 
Because every time they tried to take down someone that was getting ready to go into Mexico, they were told to stand down. Well, if they were told to stand down, then the purpose was for the guns to go to Mexico. Okay. When the Inspector General of the Department of Justice did the IG report on Fast and Furious, he did not include the authorizing document for Fast and Furious because no OSHA death case can take place or begin until it is authorized because it had international implications. Someone in the White House had to sign off on it first. So when the SF-819 was not in the final report of investigation, the rest of the investigation was junk. Those are the little details you don't know. Hmm. Um, since we're in a unique position, we're one of the few states actually on the border in the spotlight right now. Do you believe in the possibility of a grassroots campaign to I'm not talking about politics. I'm just telling you what happened in Virginia and what worked in Virginia. Could you get more details? You want me to repeat it? Okay. All of the conservatives in Virginia realized they were under attack. Okay. It wasn't just the Tea Party. It was mostly the Republican Party. It was elected officials that were conservatives that were under attack. So when all of the people that were conservatives in the state of Virginia got together, they outnumbered the rest of them and they voted the guy out. It's that simple. And one of the things I found about Americans, the simpler the explanation is, the less likely they already accept it. That works. <laughs> He's asking the question about Governor Perry sending a thousand National Guard troops to the border. Well, the first thing is they're not there yet. Okay? The second thing is, is he's not sending them to the border, from what I understand. He's sending them to back up the border. Because what's happening is the Border Patrol is working the area between the river levees and the river. DPS is handling from Highway 83 north in the populated area, and he's going to put them up in the Wild Horse Desert for the people that get around the Border Patrol and the DPS, and they're threatening the ranchers that live in the, uh, in the outlying country. And that's what I understand is going to happen. But understand this, too. Uh, you're dealing with politicians. And you have to understand a thing that's called optics. <coughs> what they're trying to make something look like. Okay? So for seven or eight years, if someone has allowed his state to put sanctuary cities in effect to the extent that those cities have become cartel hub cities, right? He has encouraged <coughs> the criminal element to move in to his state. And so now he's got to scramble to make it look like he wants them gone after he invited them to dinner. This is called optics. What it is is the American people cannot put the pieces together. I was, at, in, I was going on Glenn Beck in June of last year, and I was sitting in my hotel room early that morning ironing my shirt so I'd look pretty for you folks to look at. And they slid a newspaper under the door. Uh, Dallas Fort Worth Times Tribune or something like that. And I got the TV on and they're having a debate in the city council of Dallas Fort Worth and they're having a really a heated argument about